Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed our last video where we were focusing on your Muladhara Chakra. In this video, we'll be focusing on your second chakra, Svadhisthana Chakra, or known as your Sacral Chakra. So we'll really be working a lot into some hip opening asanas today, so some hip opening postures. So your Sacral Chakra is located, if we're looking at the spine, between your fifth lumbar um, vertebrae as well as your sacrum. And if we're looking toward the front of your body, it's located midway between your pubic bone and your navel. So just below your navel, um, towards the pubic bone is where it's located. So where we sort of want to visualize our energy going. Um, try and again bring about feelings of confidence, bring about feelings of um, comfortability in your body, comfortability in your sexual energy, as this chakra really does work onto that sexual energy, as well as really bringing an awareness into feelings of inspiration and feeling inspired. Our um, Swadhisthana chakra, your sacral chakra, is the hub for our creativity. It's our creative center of all the chakra systems. So really try again, bring about that awareness into feeling the creativity and allowing that um, creative energy to really burst through and to travel throughout your body and really allowing that chakra to um, balance out as well. I hope you enjoy the video. Please do subscribe to the page, like the video and um, share with your friends and family as well. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And um, yeah, enjoy the video and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. We're gonna start down in seated, starting in your Vajrasana pose, your Thunderbolt pose. And your big toes are touching, heels are slightly apart, knees together, spine nice and long, Good, and navel drawn in. And if this alternative is too much for you, take two blocks, stack them on top of one another. If the, uh, if the pose for you is a little bit harsh on your knees, you can just gently pop the blocks underneath you, bring your knees together, sit on top of the blocks and let your feet hug your blocks. So whatever feels comfortable for you. Good. You can sit up nice and tall, drawing the navel back and in, placing your hands onto your knees. Bring your thumb and your index to touch, allowing your eyes to close for a moment. And as we work into our Svadhisthana Chakra, your Sacral Chakra, we take this moment to tune into the body, allowing ourselves to connect, to the physical body, connect to your breath, taking this time to quiet in the mind, again connecting to this area below your navel in the pelvic region, connecting to the color orange, Connecting to feelings of creativity, comfort, connecting to your sexual energy. Feeling the feelings of inspiration, vibrancy. And again, connecting to that creative energy within us. Your Svadhisthana Chakra is the jewel of the soul. The jewel of where the creative energy lies. So again, bringing that awareness into the color orange. And feeling your Svadhisthana opening up. Take a moment to set an intent for your practice. 
Becoming aware of what you'll be spending your energies on. And once you've set your sankalpa, your intent, bring the chin down to your chest, extending through the back of your neck. Bring the palms to touch. Give a gentle rub in the palms of your hands. Once you've generated enough heat, cup the palms of your hands over your closed eyelids. Allowing that heat to dance, it dissipates. And again, throughout the practice, bringing awareness to your Svadhisthana chakra located in the pelvic region below your navel. Connecting to the feeling of confidence. Connected to the feeling of comfort, creativity inspiration you can softly blink your eyes open spreading the fingertips down the face namaskara okay so we'll start in vajrasana staying in vajrasana again if vajrasana is very uncomfortable for you you can sit in an easy seat sit with your legs crossed if you are comfortable in vajrasana stay in vajrasana i'm going to place your hands onto your knees Lengthening out through your arms, feel the length in your spine. We come into a round of sort of like your cat cow, your arch and curl, only from the seated position. Again, you can do this with your legs crossed as well, or staying in Vajrasana. If you can, see if you can stay in Vajrasana. We'll start by inhaling. You'll open up your chest, lifting the chest to the ceiling, lift your gaze up. Really feel the openness in the front of your body, arching your spine. As you breathe out, tuck your tail in, round your spine back, draw the navel in, bring the chin toward your chest, tucking in the chin. You'll breathe in again, arch your spine. Open up your chest, forward and up, and lift your gaze. And as you breathe out, round the spine, draw the navel in, tuck the tail down and under, chin toward your chest. And as you breathe in, open up your chest, arch your spine, lifting up and through. As you breathe out, rounding through, bring the chin to your chest. Breathe in and arch. Open up your chest. And breathe out and rounding through. Let's do one more. Arching on inhale, open up your chest. And exhale to round your spine, tucking the chin in. And you can gently rolling through, lifting your gaze, coming up into Vajrasana again. Good, you can release your legs, extending them out to the side, crossing at your ankles. You can sit up nice and tall. And you're going to interlace your fingers, gently round your spine back again, just to release, and then gently coming up and through. Okay. We're going to come into a round of Vayugrasan, your tiger stretching pose, with your legs crossed, bring the feet back, bring your knees underneath your hips. Again, knees underneath your hips, not wider than your hips, um, not knees together. You want to bring them slightly apart. Wrists in line with your shoulders, hands to the floor, fingertips spread out nice and wide. Engage through your abdominals. And again, don't let your shoulders sink down, really think of lifting up and out of the shoulders. We'll start with the right leg. You're going to extend the right leg back, lift the leg off the floor, bend your knee, 
Open your chest up to the ceiling, lifting your gaze. As you breathe out, round your spine, hug the knee in, bring the knee towards your forehead. Breathe in and lift. And breathe out, squeezing through. You're breathing to lift the knee. Open your chest, breathe out, knee toward the forehead. Round your spine, breathe in, arch the spine, lift the chest lift the knee breathe out to round let's do one more on this leg breathe in and lift and breathe out squeezing the knee in and gently release the foot back into a neutral spine let's work to the left side you'll inhale as you kick the left leg back open your chest up bend the knee toes to the ceiling Breathe out, hug the knee in, forehead toward your knee, lift your upper spine. Breathe in and lift, open the chest. Breathe out, knee to forehead. Breathe in, lift. And breathe out. Two more rounds, breathe in to lift. Breathe out. Last one, breathe in, lift and out a release bring your big toes to touch buttocks to heels stretch your arms forward taking a rest and again here just allowing yourself to connect back to your svadhisthana Feeling the flow of your breath, connecting to your creative energy. We'll gently come back into all fours. Let's come into our first down dog. You're adding with this one asana. Tuck the toes under, lifting your knees, chest toward the thighs, lengthening through the back of your legs, sending your buttocks, hips, up to the ceiling, crown of the head toward the floor, lengthening through your arms, soften your heels down toward the floor if you can, feel the extension throughout your spine, chest moving to your thighs, thighs moving away from your chest, good, holding through, breathe in to rise onto the balls of your feet, to lift your heels off the floor, Breathe out to release. We do four more. Breathe in to rise. And out. Inhale and rise. And exhale. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to lower. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. One more. Rise up high. And exhale, lower your heels back into your down dog. Feel the openness in the back of your legs, openness in your chest. Strength in your arms, palms of the hands are flat into the floor. Fingertips spread wide, heels moving back and down. Activate your legs, pull up on your kneecaps. Look at the space between your thumbs. Step your left leg forward towards the outside of your left hand so towards the pinky side of the the pinky finger good that foot steps out you'll draw your right leg forward as well we're going to work into namaskaram so you're going to bring the buttocks down toward the floor like we do in our yogic squat bringing the hands to heart lifting up through your chest but like we do in malasana your garland pose or yogi squat. Your hands are to heart, you're lifting up through your chest. Now the difference here is we're gonna move this a little bit, um, we're gonna make this a little bit more dynamic coming into the salutation pose. On an inhalation, you'll squeeze your elbows and your elbows into your knees, sending your knees back. See if you can lift your gaze up to the ceiling and open up your chest. As you breathe out, squeeze your knees inwards, 
pushing your elbows forward, round your spine, bring the chin towards your chest, holding the breath out, breathe in and open up your knees, stay the knees away from you with your elbows, lift your chest up to the sky. As you breathe out, squeezing forward and through, round your spine, squeeze the knees into your elbows, send the arms forward, chin to chest. And as you breathe in, you'll open up your chest again, lift the gaze up to the ceiling, chest opening, knees squeezing back, squeezing the elbows into your knees. As you breathe out, squeeze the knees into your elbows, send your arms forward, round your spine, bring the chin into your chest. And let's do the last one. Breathe in, open up your chest, lift your gaze. And as you breathe out, recover your body, hands to the floor, lifting your heels, turning your toes forward, heel toe your feet in, and gently fold down into Uttanasana, your forward fold, head is nice and relaxed, back of the legs are long, again if your hamstrings feel extremely tight, you're more than welcome to bend your knees, chest to thighs and head to head. We'll come into a half lift. Bring your hands into your shins, draw the navel in, coming into a flat back, lengthen out your spine, slide your hands up your legs, coming up to standing, roll the shoulders into your ears, send them back and down, find your mountain pose, Tadasana. Bringing your feet together in your mountain pose, we're going to come into two rounds of Surya Namaskar, nothing too hectic. Step to the front edge of your mat, feet together, spread the toes wide and place them down into the floor. Activate through your legs, draw the navel in, shoulders back and down, lengthening through. Bring your hands to touch at heart center into Pranamasana. Take a deep breath in here and an exhale. On your next inhale, stretch your arms forward. Lift the arms up to the ceiling, draw the navel in, open your chest to the ceiling. As you breathe out, stretch forward and down, folding from your hips, coming into Uttanasana, fingertips to the floor. Bend your knees, step your right leg back, release the right knee down to the floor, fingertips staying down, driving the hip down toward the floor, breathe in, open your sternum to the ceiling. Ashwasanchalasana. As you breathe out, lift your back knee, step back with your left leg, coming into Abhimukha Swanasana, your downward dog. Rise onto the balls of your feet, soften the knees down into the floor, stretching the buttocks back onto your heels, stretch your arms forward, coming into Balasana, your child's pose. Look at the space between your thumbs, chest comes in between your thumbs and your chin moves a little bit further forward than your four fingers. So chest in between thumbs and chin down to the floor. Into your eight limb pose, Ashtanga Namaskar. Point the toes back, slide your legs back, flatten the body, breathe in, come to Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Again, don't let the shoulders squeeze into your ears, send them down and out your ears. Tuck your toes and lift into down dog. Hug your right knee to your chest. Step the foot in between your hands. Left knee down to the floor. Draw the shoulder blades together. Open up your chest, lifting up. And on exhale, step your back leg forward into a forward fold, arms stretching forward, spine nice and long, breathing, open your chest, Hasta Uttanasana, exhale into Pranamasana, to your left side, breathe in, lift, open your chest, Hasta Uttanasana, breathe out, fold, step your left leg back, knee to the floor, open your chest, 
Ashwasan Chalasana. Exhale into Adamuka, your down dog. Rising up, knees to the floor, buttocks to heels, arms stretching forward, child pose. Look at the space between your thumbs, chest and chin comes forward. Slide your legs back, lift your chest. And on exhale, down dog. On the inhale, left knee hugs to the chest, foot between your hands, right knee to the floor, lift your chest. And on the exhale, back leg to step forward. Arms stretching forward and up, lift your chest, Hasta Uttanasana, and exhale, hands to heart, Pranamasana. Resting your arms to the side, find Tadasana, tuck the tail in and under. Take a moment to feel your breath. When you're ready, bring your arms out to the side, breathe in, lift them to the ceiling, swan dive them down as you fold forward. Step your right leg back and your left leg back. Come to down dog. Rise up onto the balls of your feet, knees to the floor, buttocks to heels, stretching forward and down. Taking a moment to rest here. Good, and you can gently slide your hands back, roll up through each vertebra of your spine, and come up to seated in Vajrasana. The next pose we're going to work into is called your Shashank um, Bhujangasana. So it's your striking cobra pose. You'll see why we sort of call it the striking cobra. <laughs> so Shashank Bhujangasana, you want to start in your Shashank Asana. So your hair's pose, sort of like your hair's pose or the moon's pose. You're going to breathe in, lift your arms up to the ceiling, turn your palms forward. Breathe out, stretch out your spine, buttocks to heels, forehead down to the floor. So it's almost like your extended child's pose, okay? You're going to look at the space between your thumbs. There should be enough room for your chest to slide through. You're going to slide your forehead, nose, chin, and then your chest if you can through your arms, striking through like a snake and lifting your chest. I'll demonstrate. You'll go forehead, nose, chin, chest, open up the chest, breathe in, and out, buttocks to heels. So pretty nice and easy, right? So again, those arms are extended forward, Forehead down, slide the forehead, nose, chin, and chest. We're going to do it three more times. Good. You're going to slide through and lift forehead, nose, chin, chest. Press into your hands. Open your chest. And exhale. Buttocks to heels. Let's repeat. Forehead, nose, chin, chest. Open up your chest into cobra and exhale, buttocks to heels. Let's do two more and forehead, nose, chin, chest, lift and exhale, buttocks to heels. Coming into your last round, forehead, nose, Chin, chest, breathe in, lift, and exhale, buttocks to heels. Taking a moment again to rest here, feel the breath. You can slide your hands back, roll up through each vertebra of your spine, coming up to seated. I'm going to work into Ananjaneya Sun, your low lunge. From Ananjaneya Sun, work into your Ardha Hanuman, so which is your half split, or your half monkey's pose. Good. You're going to come into all fours, tuck your toes under, lift up your hips, come to down dog. 
Let's start with your left leg. Extend your left leg up to the ceiling. Hips are nice and square. Stay the heel away from you. Draw the knees to your chest. Step the foot in between your hands. Release your right knee down to the floor. Good. And gently lift your body. So again here, you're feeling yourself really driving that right hip down into the floor. That right hip flex, excuse me, down into the floor. Knees and ankle in alignment. So your knee an ankle in alignment. Again, draw your left buttocks back, right hip forward. You're going to gently squeeze down through your right hip. Again, feeling that openness in your hip flexor, feeling the openness slightly into your abdomen. Feel the openness in the underside of your left leg. You're going to extend your arms up to the ceiling, breathe in. And again here, you can take a back bend if you'd like, or you can simply stay with your arms extended, hips driving down to the floor. If you'd like to take a back bend, lifting up and out of your hips, opening up your sternum to the ceiling. And you can recover your body, release your hands, with your fingertips down into the floor. You're going to simply lengthen out your left leg, extend your buttocks back towards your heels, but keep it lifted off your heels. Flex your left foot, so send the heel away from you, toes towards you. And again, now watch that you aren't rounding your spine here. So you really want to think of lengthening your spine by bringing the crown of the head to reach forward. Good. And bringing your buttocks and tailbone to reach back and down. So can you feel how that length happens into your spine? So again, if you're feeling that roundedness, really try to bring the shoulder blades together. Open your sternum and lift the crown of the head forward. Lifting, sending the buttocks and tailbone down to the, to the floor. Flex your feet, pull up on your kneecap, lengthening through. And you can walk your fingertips forward and fold over the leg if you'd like. Or you can simply hold in this posture. And if you do need some support, you'll take your blocks, place them underneath your hands, holding onto the blocks. You can walk the blocks forward. Good. So you'll feel that openness in your left hamstring. Again, driving the right hip forward, left buttocks back. You can fold again. Again, trying to keep that length into your spine. You're going to gently bend into that knee, drive your right hip down to the floor again. Open your arms, breathe in. Bring your palms to touch, hands to heart. You'll send your right elbow over your left knee. Lift your left elbow up to the ceiling, giving a gentle twist. Good. And if you'd like to take it a little bit further, tuck your back toes under, lift your back knee off the floor, coming into a high lunge twist. Again, you're driving your back heel all the way back, opening up your back leg, squeezing down through your right hip. You can release your back knee down to the floor, recover your body, extend your arms to the ceiling, breathing in, breathe out, fingertips down, and again, stretch that left leg upward, toes up to the ceiling, excuse me. Crown of the head reaching forward, tailbone reaching back and down, open length in your spine. You'll take your right hand, send the hand over your left leg. Again, you're more than welcome to use a block, holding onto the block at any height. Over onto the left side, you're going to open up your left arm, taking a twist in your half moon pose. Uh, sorry, not half moon, your half monkey pose, half split. And 
and release your left arm. Replace the right hand back. Bend your left knee. Tuck your back toes under. Lift your back knee. Step the left leg back. Into down dog. Your right leg goes up to the ceiling. Hips are nice and squared. Hug the knee to your chest. Step the foot in between your hands. Release your left knee this time down. Good. And again, feeling yourself driving down through your left hip. So the left hip is moving down into the floor. You'll breathe in as you breathe out. Left hip reaches down towards the floor. Knee and ankle in alignment of your right leg. Right buttocks moving back. Left hip moving forward. Feeling the openness in your hip flexor and your your left hip flexor and quad, perhaps slightly into your abdomen. You'll inhale, extend your arms into an Anjanea sun or your crescent lunge. Again, if you'd like to bring a slight back bend here, lifting up and out of your hips, open your sternum to the ceiling. You can recover your body. Release your hands. And again, this time I'll do the blocks on this side. You'll take your blocks, holding onto the blocks, stretching your right leg, and again, drawing the right buttocks back, left hip forward. Flex your right foot, toes up to the ceiling, heels away from you. Now again, if you're feeling that roundedness, open up the sternum, crown of the head reaching forward, tailbone reaching down. And again, that support in your blocks, you can use that there at any height you're comfortable to. So go with whatever feels really good for your body. Good. So you can use the blocks, you can go without the blocks, stretch forward, folding over the leg, feel the openness in your hamstring. Activate that right leg, pulling up on the kneecap. And again, still bringing that length into your spine. Bend that right knee, driving the left hip down. Arms open to the ceiling, breathe in. Hands to heart. Take your left elbow this time over your right knee. Right elbow to the ceiling, taking a twist. So a low lunge twist first, you can hold for a few breaths, driving your left hip down, stabilizing through your right leg, softening your belly. Now if you'd like to, come to a high lunge, take your left toes under, lift your left knee off the floor, send the left heel away from you, activating through your left leg. Again, grounding down and really connecting that hip toward the floor, reaching it down to the floor. When you are ready, softly bend your back knee, recover your arms, recover the body, arms to the ceiling, breathe in, breathe out, hands to the floor, tuck your back toes under, sorry, not tuck your back toes, stretch out your right leg. Now take your left hand over your right knee again if you need a block holding on to the block whatever feels comfortable for you again open up now your right arm taking a twist in your half split your half monkey pose Ardha Hanuman Asana And you can release that arm, replace your left hand back, bend your right knee, tuck your back toes, step the leg back, into down dog. You can give a gentle walk into your legs, bending the left knee, extending the right, and then extending the left and bending your right, just to give some release into your hips. Let's now work into your Ekapada Raja Kopta Sun. 
your one-legged pigeon pose. Let's start with the left leg, left leg to the ceiling again, into your three-legged dog. Hug the knee towards your chest. You'll take your left ankle towards your right wrist and then bring the knee down towards your left um, wrist. You're sliding back with your right leg. Again, try and keep your hips nice and even. So the side of your shin is on the floor. Good, so the side of your left shin is on the floor. Point your right toes back and slide the leg really far back. And bring your right hip down toward the floor. So you'll feel that the left buttocks wants to round back and sit onto the floor. So try and really activate, lift out of that left buttocks. Bring your right hip down to the floor. Sliding through, fingertips can stay down. If you need extra support, pop a block underneath your left buttocks. That will lift the left buttocks up nice and high. We're going to hold for a few breaths. Again, hands into the floor, toes pointing back. Hips are nice and even. And you can tuck your back toes under, lift the knee, step the left leg back into down dog. Let's work your right side, leg up to the ceiling. Hug the knee to chest and bring the right ankle towards your left wrist, right knee to right wrist, sliding your left leg, left leg back. And again, hips are nice and square. You'll feel that that opposite buttocks, your right buttock, you can always pop a block underneath that buttocks. And sitting up nice and tall. Feel yourself activating, opening up through the hips. And when you're ready, tuck your back toes under, lift your back knee, step back with that leg, coming into your down dog, holding your down dog for about five breaths. And then you can gently walk your feet to your hands. Come into Uttan Asana, folding forward. And gently bend your knees, bringing the buttocks down to the floor. Good. And you can spread your legs out wide, as wide as is comfortable for you, so you don't have to go very wide. We're going to come in to Padaprasa Pashtimotan Asana, your forward fold, your wide-legged forward fold. Good. So you're going to flex your feet, invite the back of your legs down into the floor and lift up through your spine. So try not to round your spine back, really sit on top of your sitting bones. You're going to breathe and extend your arms. I'll give you two variations to this as well. You're going to stretch forward and down, fingertips to the floor. Again, feel the chest opening forward, shoulder blades to touch. You're going to walk your hands forward and then bring your belly button down to the floor and gently bring the forehead down to the floor. You can stretch your arms out to the side, interlace your fingers, lift your arms. Whatever feels good for you. You can hold here for a few breaths, then bring your hands underneath your shoulders, gently lift yourself up to stand, to seated, excuse me, lifting up nice and through. Another variation of that is you can use your blocks. If you can't go all the way flat down, not a problem. You're going to stack your blocks on top of one another at any height that you're comfortable to do that at. Feel the length in your spine. Again, breathing and extending through your arms on exhale, reaching forward and down. See if you can bend your um, elbows, bring them to the floor, and rest your forehead onto your blocks. Good, and again, really feeling yourself driving the back of the legs into the floor, flexing your feet. 
and to come out the pose, lift your head, walk your hands back, you can remove your blocks, and then gently tuck your hands underneath your knees, bend your knees, bring the legs together, and let your body rock side to side, just to release your hips. And then you can place your hands down, we'll come up to standing. Good. In our standing, we're going to work into Uttita um, Trikonasana. Uttita Trikonasana is your extended triangle pose. You're going to step your legs out wide, and then we'll work into Goddess Pose as well. Legs nice and wide, about leg distance apart, tucking the tail in. Also feeling yourself really drawing awareness to that area, just below your navel again. You're going to extend your arms out to the side, wrist in line with your shoulders, and then fingertips really spreading out nice and wide, stretch them away from you. So you're stretching in both directions here. You're stretching to your right, you're stretching to your left, you're stretching upwards, tucking down with your tailbone, rooting down through your feet. Toes are slightly turned in. You're going to turn your right toes out at about 90. Bring the toes of your left leg in at 60. Good. Again, watch that your hips aren't turning toward the side. Try bring your hips and shoulders to face forward. You'll feel how you draw back into that left hip. You're going to gaze at your right hand thumb. You're going to think of opening up the right side of your body, bringing length into that right side by stretching the right fingertips away from you. Really reach away from you, open up that side of the body. Bring your hand into the floor if you can, or wrap the hand onto your shin, bringing the four fingers back and the thumb forward, lifting your right arm up to the ceiling. You'll gaze down at your foot. Your head should be in line with your foot or your ankle. Again, you can use your blocks here at any height, holding onto the block behind your ankle. So any variation you're comfortable to do here with the block, without the block, hand onto your shin or fingertips into the floor behind your ankle. You'll gaze down, tuck your chin in and then gently lift your gaze up toward your top hand's thumb. Again here, really connecting to your breath, feeling the stability in your legs. Again, if the gaze up to your top hand is too much for your neck, you can always just gaze forward or you can gaze down. Whatever feels comfortable. And to come out the pose, stretch your top arm all the way up and away from you, lifting up through that top arm, breathing in. And as you breathe out, turning your toes forward, gazing forward. You're now going to turn your heels inwards, toes outwards, coming into goddess pose, tuck the tail down and under, drop your hips down toward the floor. Try not to let your buttocks stick out here, really tuck it in and under. Open out your knees, bend your elbows, show elbows in line with your shoulders, bring your thumb and index to touch. Holding goddess pose. Feel the strength in your legs, feel the openness in your hip and pelvic region. Breathing, holding for a few more breaths. You'll now extend your arms, lengthen out your legs, turning your toes in again, heels slightly out. Let's work Uttita Trikonasana to the left side, turning your left toes out at 90. Bring the heel of the right leg slightly out. Again, watch your hips and shoulders. Hips and shoulders to face forward. You're stretching away from your left hand. So gaze at your left hand thumb. Stretch the arm away from you. Opening up the left side of your body. Bring the hand into your shin. Or into the block behind your ankle. Or again into the floor. Raising your right arm up to the ceiling, gaze down to your left foot, tuck your chin in and gently lift your gaze up to the ceiling or to your right hand thumb.
Nice, a strong right leg, strong left leg, navel drawing in. Again, if it's too much for your neck, either gazing forward or gazing down. And to come out the posture, lift up through your top arm, breathe in, come to standing, turning your toes in to gaze forward. Again, heels inwards, toes out. Bend your knees, drive the hips down to the floor, goddess pose. Again, making that box shape with your legs, bending your elbows, thumb and index to touch. We hold five breaths. Feeling really that strength through your legs, feeling yourself connecting to that area of your sacral chakra. Feeling the confidence, feeling that creative burst of energy, that inspiration. And you can lengthen your arms, lifting up and out of your legs. Turning your toes in, release your arms and heel toe your feet in. Give a gentle shape into your legs if you'd like. We're going to come in now to a seated balance, your Merudandasana, your spinal column um, balance, spinal column pose. You're going to come down to sit. You can open your legs a little bit wider than your hips, maybe about shoulder width apart. You're going to take your hands, hold on to your big toe. Again, if it's not accessible to hold on to your big toe, wrap your hands around your foot towards the pinky toe side of the foot. Or you can just hold on to your big toe. Good. You're going to lift up through your spine. Let's start nice and slow. Bring the soles of the feet to touch first, lifting up through your spine. You're going to re release your right foot off the floor, keep the leg bent and holding steady. So you're still feeling that length in your spine. You're feeling yourself really balancing onto your sit bones or your coccyx and release that leg. Now bring the left leg up, keep the knee bent as well. So again, nice and easy, right? Let's work the right side again. Very easy. Now see if you can stretch out that leg. Good. If you're legs are a little bit too long or you have a very short arms it happens you can hold on to the back of your legs or onto your calf that's also another option okay. you can gently release and extend the left side and you can release okay. so we're going to really work into the posture now so what you want to feel is yourself Really moving your sternum up and forward. Try not to round your spine back, otherwise you're really going to roll back onto your back. So you're going to lift up through your spine, feel your sit bones. When you're ready, you're going to lengthen up your right leg. See if you can lengthen up your left leg. Keep your knees bent for now, see if you can find that balance. Draw the shoulder blades together, let them touch. Good. When you are ready, see if you can open up your legs, really lengthen out the legs and then feel yourself balancing on your sit bone or your coccyx, whatever feels comfortable, opening the legs out wide. Good, holding steady, lift up through your sternum, lift up through your spine. I will turn to the side just now, just to show you what the side view will look like. And a gentle release when you're ready. Let's work that posture one more time. I'm gonna to turn to the side, you can stay facing towards me. And again, holding on to your feet or your toes. So when you're ready, I'm going to lift, you're going to lift up through your spine just to show you the side angle or the side view of the pose. You're going to lean the body slightly back, balancing on your sit bones. Keep the knees bent, lift your legs. Once you've established your balance, begin to lengthen out your legs. Opening the legs up and through, lift up through your spine. Good. Sitting up nice and tall. Find that balance. And you can release, bend the knees. Lift up. And you can come to cross your legs. Sitting up. 
into your easy seat, releasing through. Bring the hands to heart for a moment, let your eyes close and begin to draw awareness into your breath. Become aware of the effect of your asana practice on your physical body, on your energy. Taking that moment again to connect to your breath. And then allowing yourself to connect to your Svadhisthana Chakra, the Sacral Chakra. Feel yourself connecting to that energy. And feel how these postures that we've worked into have helped to ignite that creative energy and you can bring your chin down to your chest giving honor to your divine self which is whole and complete sat chit ananda i honor the light and life within you may there be peace in your heart peace to those around you and peace to all beings you can blink your eyes open lifting your gaze thank you again for joining me and i hope you've enjoyed the video and i'll see you in the next video Hariyom tatsat namaste and peace be with you mm.